The Jim Baker Show. I'm your co-host, Tammy Sue Baker. Today's special guest, Pastor Mark Biltz. And now, please give a warm welcome to my dad and the host of The Jim Baker Show, Jim Baker. Thank you, Tammy Sue Baker. And thank you for being my co-host when You're mom's welcome. away. It's my pleasure. For a little rest. And we have Mark Biltz back with us sure with an amazing brand new book. Yeah. God's Daytimer. Why did you call it that? Did you give it that name? Yes, I did. I even kind of drew the cover of the book because it's, we need to, God has a daytimer and it's like it's locked and we need to unlock the truths that he has within his daytimer. The significances of eclipses is when they fall on God's calendar, number one, and the area that they cover. That's what we have to look at. Wow. Just like World War I, there was a total solar eclipse over Eastern Europe and over Turkey. And what happens? You have World War I, and the Ottoman Empire is destroyed. You had a total solar eclipse during the time of Jonah. But they repented, and they were spared. And so a total solar eclipse doesn't mean judgment has to fall. It's all dependent on if, as a nation, we repent. So that's this, when you know there's a significance, is when uh, they fall on key dates on the biblical calendar. And then what, uh, do they fall over the ocean or over a nation? You know, so when they fall over a nation on key dates on the biblical calendar, then we know that nothing necessarily has to happen, but God is trying to tell us something. Don't let the false prophets destroy you by cutting each other apart and cutting the real prophets apart. We're having, you know, anybody who's tearing up the church is not of God. Anybody that's tearing up the prophets is not of God. I've said it over and over again. I'll say it again today. You know, you pass from death into life because you love the brethren. Not because you chop them up. Not because it's, we've got to be together. I'll tell you, the days that are coming, we're going to need each other. Yes, we are. And we're going to have to have each other. God has spoke to me probably for 30, 40, oh, 40 some years mm. that the key of survival, the key for the last days is assembling together yes. with God's people. Yes. As, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, and the more so as you see that day approach. That's right. We are to be together. We're to love one another. And it's time for God's people. You know what? We treat movie stars and, and sinners better than we treat some of the Christians mm -hmm. that are in our midst and we need to love one another yes and it's time it's time it's time it's time how should the church prepare for the times not coming the times we're in yes we're we're there yes we're there people we're there we're in the hour and that's why i'm so concerned about people throwing out things of god in the, in the word well, I think we need to understand God's timing. And Jeremiah was surrounded by false prophets. He was, there were more false prophets in Israel at that time than any other time. Jeremiah was one of the few prophets. Now, let me ask you something. Uh, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just making this up. Wherever, whatever state you're living in, let's say there was a major war that you knew was going to break out and all, everybody's property was going to be taken by another nation. Okay? And let's say you had a month warning. What are you going to do? Mm. Sell your house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you following me? Mm -hmm. I mean, let me bring up the Exodus. Do you remember when Moses <laughs> talked about the plague and everyone's cattle is going to be destroyed? What did God say? Tomorrow at this time, all your cattle out in the field will be destroyed. What do you think that did to the cattle future market? <laughs> okay. If, if you're an Egyptian farmer, what are you going to do? You're going to sell your cattle to the Jews. That's where they got all their cattle from. Okay, immediately the market dies, but at least God gave them mercy and gave them a day's warning of what to do with their cattle. Put them inside, sell it to the Jews, you have warning. So these things are warnings. Now let's go back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Oh, it's so true. Here, Babylon is coming to take over his whole country. If you knew by the prophet Jeremiah that 
all the land is going to be taken by this foreign nation, what are you going to want to do with your land? Sell it. And Jeremiah's uncle comes to him and says, take this land, buy it. And he goes to God and God says, yeah, go ahead and buy it. Okay, now to me that in one sense, that seems the opposite. But the people weren't listening to God. They weren't listening to the prophet. They were in emotions, you know, trying to follow what they thought was true. And so coming back to what believers should do, I believe practically, we need to stock up on food for any natural disaster. You need to be prepared, especially if something major is happening. You need to be physically prepared. But you also need to be spiritually prepared, Mm -hmm. you know. So for me, it's, we need to be spiritually prepared. We need to be physically prepared because we don't know what year is going to happen. But God is looking for people that are watching. But he tells you when to watch. That's what the calendar is all about. Mm. Are there any prophetic scriptures that we need to pay attention to right now? I mean, something that you're obs- can, I, can you be as obsessed? <laughs> you know, I get obsessed with certain scriptures. I get because sure. God's speaking to me. Yeah. Do you have something that's just the, piercing your heart? The almost? one that pierces my heart is First Thessalonians five: sudden destruction and know the times really? and the seasons. It's no get on God's calendar. Yeah. I think that the one that I'm obsessed with is that we are to we we are not in darkness because we know that's right. The times and that's seasons. Right. And that's the greatest thing. You talked about fear. Have no fear. You, you can't have fear when you know what's going to happen. He tells you what's going to yes. happen. And you make ready for what's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen that year, remember, every year we're dress rehearsals. And I think that, again, if nothing happens this year, next year is going to be just as crazy. 2018, it could be next year. Uh, but for me, that the big focus, like a laser, is on God's calendar, knowing the times, knowing the seasons, uh, and being prayed up. I believe I know where the rapture takes place in the Bible. And if you listen to me, you know. <laughs> but... I believe it comes at the final trumpet. The last trump. The one heard of the blast on Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> Somebody agrees that that's where it's supposed to be. So not very many people that's believe so it's where it says it is in the Bible. The Bible says exactly where it is. And people say, well, we're not to know. We're not to know these things. That's not but true. What the five says. You haven't read the Bible. Uh Uh-oh. If you believe that. Come on. You're in darkness. Mm. And you're not in darkness, are you? You wouldn't be in this. You wouldn't be sitting here if you were in darkness. You wouldn't come hear this guy especially. (laughs) You would have walked out. You're, you're, (laughs) you're. You love truth because you're coming to hear Mark Mills. (laughs) Because he's a preacher of truth. And I mean it. But we're to know. We're to know things. He wants to, we, if we look up and see something in the sky, he said, I've sent this. I want you to know this. This is on my day. This is on the day that I have set. I want you to know it. And yet there's so many in church. They say, well, we can't know these things. We can't know anything. Well, he says, I'm going to tell you everything. Yes. Uh, uh, people that say they're not to know haven't read their Bible he, want, he rebuked the scribes and the Pharisees because they could discern the face of the sky, but they didn't know the sign of the times. And Rosh Hashanah, uh, when you study the, the Jewish mindset, is also the wedding ceremony. It's the Nesuin Ketavim. Uh, and what bride doesn't know when her wedding day is? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they know. Oh, my wife knew. Oh, sure. <laughs> you spend a lot of money getting ready. <laughs> And so uh, the Bible clearly, and in my book, I go through on Rosh Hashanah, proving biblically uh, how that is the day of the resurrection of the dead. It's always been taught in Judaism that Rosh Hashanah is the very day of the resurrection of the dead. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. You know how in the Bible it says uh, to us Christians that how we see through a glass darkly, we only know in part. Uh, Well, I understood that just as the spring feast of the Lord were fulfilled to the very day, to the very hour of his first coming. You now understand the Lord will fulfill the fall feast to the day 
of his second coming. Today's offer is God's Day Timer Offer. For a donation of $35, you're going to receive God's Day Timer Book, God's Day Timer DVD, and the 2017-2018 Jewish Calendar, which is September 2017 through December 2018. That is 16 months. That is a value of $52 today for a donation of $35. In this offer, Pastor Mark Bilds breaks down the seven feasts of the Lord in a way that is easy to understand and explains the importance of knowing God's calendar to better know Him and His plans. He fulfilled the spring feast to the day. He'll fulfill the fall feast to the day. But if we're not on the calendar that God is on, we're going to miss the event. If if you love God and and you want to be there at the event, then it's it's a good thing to be at the dress rehearsal. Think about this. Would you want to be at the wedding of the Messiah? Oh, yeah. And so I tell people, then why wouldn't you want to be at the dress rehearsal? He teaches us about the feast and prophetic dress rehearsals for what is to come. He teaches us the significance of keeping Passover, Yom Kippur, and other feasts. In this 16-month calendar from September 2017 through December 2018, he clarifies and identifies the significant events according to the Jewish calendar using scripture and Hebrew references. Dad, when they call right now, they're going to receive God's Day Timer Offer for a donation of $35. You will receive God's Day $52 to you today. So call right now. 1-888-988-1588 1-888-988-1588 or write us today at P.O. Box 7330 Branson, Missouri 65615 or if I was you I will go to the website jimbakershow.com and get your order in right now I'm concerned about the church Me I mean too. this is hmm. there, you know God let us have an election and we, we, I recommended people vote on the platform. <laughs> this is a platform where we preach from the platform. Well, the platform is what, what the Democrats believe or Republicans believe or whatever. They have a platform. Yes. And, and I believe that we, in the church, have lost our essence, our if you talk about some of the stuff that we're doing in this country, there's most of the churches will not preach Revelation. about it. They won't. Mm. They're scared to death. And so we're in a quiet war, and the, yeah. the church is very quiet right now. They're asleep. Well, That's why they're quiet. But what? <laughs> help me with help. But help me. I mean, well, I love the church. I he, do too. Jesus loves the church. He died I, for. The, but yes. the church isn't the church necessarily. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? The, the a, a steeple is not necessarily the church. Mm-hmm. It's the people mm-hmm. who love God. Amen. Remember in Ephesians, God said He wants to present Himself a glorious bride without yes. spot, yes. wrinkle, or blemish. Okay. Well, what does that mean? We all have heard that. But how do we know if we have any spots, wrinkles, or blemishes? You have to go back to the Torah. Do you know in Leviticus, it mentions 12 blemishes that if the, the priest had, they couldn't minister? Okay. And guess what one of the blemishes was? A flat nose. What in the world is a flat nose? Well, think about this. In the Song of Songs, it talks about the bride. In the Song of Solomon, the bride. There it says the bride has a nose like the Tower of Lebanon. <laughs> okay, now wh- how would you like someone to say your nose is like the Tower of Lebanon? Okay, and then it says that looks toward Damascus. Well, what, what does that mean? That, that uh, sounds like an insult. Oh, well, exactly, but it's not. Do you know in the book of Job, Job said, the spirit of God is in my nostrils. And the spirit of God has discernment. A nose like the Tower of Lebanon that's looking toward the enemy, Damascus is. The bride has great spiritual discernment. She can see when the enemy is coming. But the church that has a flat nose is in trouble, has no discernment. Hmm. 
So it's a, it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual it's thing. I even, have another book I'm almost done where I go through all the spots, all the blemishes. You're writing another book already? And the wrinkles. <laughs> and what we haven't, one we, of the we haven't taken are. this one in yet. <laughs> well, give me, Next year. Everybody get this book so we Next can get year. this new book out. But this book is so important. This is so good. In this DVD that we're sending with the package, you have the DVD, the book, and the calendar. This is what tells me mm. the Bible's real. Yeah. yeah. This is what tells me yes. it's truth. In your DVD, you talk about the age of lawlessness. We're seeing lawlessness in the, lawlessness in the United States. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the divided states of the United States. It talks about the man of lawlessness. Not only the, the time of lawlessness, but the man of lawlessness. Mm. You know, what's interesting is what does it mean to be lawless? How many of you would want to live in a lawless society? No, thank you. Okay. Well, when it says lawless, what laws is it referring to? The laws of Las Vegas? Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> who's, when it says lawless, whose laws are they talking about? Mm -hmm. They're talking about God's laws. Morals. They're talking about God. In other words, they do not want to follow God's laws. And the Antichrist, it talks about when that wicked one will be revealed. Do you know what the word for wicked is there is lawless. Mm. And actually, it means Torah-less. Because oh. the Torah is interpreted as the law. And so the Antichrist is going to be one who has thrown out the Torah as God's laws. Wow. And look what has happened. If America is going to go back and become strong and be a great light, we're going to have to get back to godliness. And we're going to, have to get yep. back to, to real truth and, 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 and government and, and all. Because we, we are seeing this thing come apart. And, uh, I mean, they, they've been appealing, Mondo, to the street people. Yeah. And, and to the the rioting and, and all those kinds of people and that that uh, it, you know they love it because that's where they're getting lots of votes and all and all but america has is coming apart at the seams can, can i i'm going to run a piece of your from sure. your video sure can i do that of course about lawlessness let's just run this can, could you guys run that in the control room please Many of you realize we live in an age of total lawlessness. Everyone wants to do whatever is right in their own eyes. As a matter of fact, did you know in the New Testament, the Antichrist is called the lawless one? It talks about the wicked one who will be revealed. And if you look up that Greek word for wicked, it means without law. But guess what it means more in particular? Without Torah. Torah or Torahlessness is what is going on in these last days. So many people have felt like they have the authority to throw out God's Torah. Now, Torah was mistranslated as law. It actually just means instruction. In other words, the Torah was God's instruction for his kids. And we know from Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for instruction. So the, the Torah is God's law for his kids. Now, what happens is we become lawless when we want to throw out everything that God has instructed us with. And so we need to realize the Antichrist is someone who is without Torah, he's lawless, and that is the age that we live in. Wow. And that's from the video. That, that's a part of this video, and there's so much more. That's only a minute or so right there. But uh, I, let me do the part on um, legalism versus lawlessness. 
it's, it's just a minute or so. And uh, I just want to give you a little idea that this is first class, powerful, mm-hmm. powerful teaching in video form. So roll that piece, will you? People often ask me if the Feast of the Lord are for today. Well, absolutely, most definitely. After all, we have to realize they are His divine appointments. These are called the Feast of the Lord, not the Feast of the Jews. When the creator of the universe invites you to a party, why in the world would you not want to attend? I mean, these feasts are huge. These are His divine appointed times that He wants to meet with His creation. How can you call coming to the wedding of the Messiah legalism? What are you going to do when the wedding of the Messiah comes? Are you going to tell him, no, this is legalism? No, I'm going to say, count me in. I'm going to answer the invitation. Not only that, I am not arrogant enough to think I have the authority to edit or erase anything God wrote. According to the Bible, his words are everlasting. When you take on the mantle of authority that you can edit God's word, you can tell God which ones of his words are done away with or which ones you can change. Man, that's that's pretty scary. So for me, I I don't think I have the authority to tell God his word has gone away or needs to be edited. I'm not qualified to be his editor. Now, this is. This video, uh, tell us, I guess, what, what is the video, what, what was your purpose in making a video? What, what do you cover in it? Well, the whole purpose of the video was uh, multi-level. But one of the things is people can learn more by visual sometimes than by what they read. Mm-hmm. And some people would rather watch an hour-long video than spend four hours reading a book. And so in the video, we, we have both. That way they complement each other. Uh, a lot of the video isn't in the book, and a lot of the book stuff isn't on the video. The video covers more uh, concepts, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, and uh, you will absolutely love the video, uh, the work that they did uh, producing it. It's a first-quality video. So for a gift of $35, we're sending you this new book, God's Daytime, are all about the timings and what God's doing and all. I'd want to be on his schedule, wouldn't you? And then this video that you just saw little parts of. And then, of course, this amazing calendar that will give you an in so you can get back on the right track, on the right dates in your life, too. So we're going to send that for a gift of $35. And some of you that have never supported the ministry and you watch all the time, (laughs) if you'd like to keep us uh, on the air, just just order this $35 set and read it. You'll, you'll have a feast of your own on the Word of God and the things of God and some helpful, helpful, help, 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 helps in your life. And you do that and support the ministry. You'll, you'll support Mark Biltz if you love him. I believe he's a prophet of God for this hour. And he doesn't claim that, I'm sure, but I, I can say that if I want to. I say we're this we is America. a non-profit ministry. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, this, this, well, part of this would go to him, too, because the labor is worthy of their hire. But when you give to a prophet, the Bible says you get a prophet's reward. So that's all I'm talking about today. Please order this. And um, if you want to get several calendars for your office and maybe home, you, this is really a calendar that's both what we call, the, I guess, America's calendar. The, what do you call it? The... The Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian, the Gregorian the calendar. Uses, yeah. And, uh, Pope but, Gregory. and the holy calendar, God's calendar. It's blended together. So you have your calendar and then you can see the days, the months that are what God talks about. And those special days are all there. And it's, you know, people are going to think you really know how to tell the future because you're <laughs> going to be able to tell a lot by what God's calendar is all about. That's what's so very, very, very important. But the, the big thing that's in the news today and this show is, is, does a lot of news. God spoke to me when I was in prison that I should come out 
and share revelation, what's going on. So that's why we even call one of our shows Revelation in the News. But he said to look. When I was in prison, God showed me this and this and this. And I saw all the fire from the sky. I saw all the things in Revelation. And, and God said, look for these things. And that's why I warn you. It says in Matthew 24, the signs of Christ's return. One of them, there will be a time when there will be no food to eat. That's what God said. Jesus Christ himself said that. And he said all these things, these false prophets and all the crazy things going on in that day, wars, rumors of wars, all of those things. And so we need to know what the Bible says. And that's why I'm to be kind of a reporter on the wall, (laughs) looking and seeing what's going on and telling you about the future. But the big thing that's developing is Korea, North Korea. You know, we just read earlier that uh, President Trump had made a comment to North Korea saying that uh, it will be met with fire, fire and fury like the world has never seen before if their threats do continue. And a matter of fact, North Korea has been moving anti-ship cruise missiles and uh, putting those on patrol boats. They've been watching that with uh, spy satellites, and they're keeping an eye on that. So between uh, North Korea has actually developed 60 nuclear bombs. This morning, they confirmed there was one. By this afternoon, there was 60. Something is going on in, you know. Do you know, John, I'm going to ask you a question. (laughs) I've been suspicious that they're not building these bombs all by themselves. Maybe I'm. Not too smart, but I, I just I I think they're getting parts and pieces and and perhaps whole bombs from other countries. And I could name a few, but I won't. But I this this development is too fast, and there's going to be a quick you work know, I, in the last days. But this is a quick thing going John on. John Shorey did say when he was here. North Korea was developing these missiles rapidly. He said, but once they're able to build this ICBM, the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, it won't take much time for them to progress even further. Now, the the mainstream media was giving them six months to a year. It hasn't been that much time. It's been like four weeks. And like, like I said, this morning there was one nuclear bomb that they confirmed on Washington Post, and by this afternoon now there's 60. And our president says he's going to respond if they do something. They continue to threaten us. We could be in another world war within days or hours if, you know, it's just possible. We're not saying it's going to be. You have to be so careful because of... I've got my critics from the church. <laughs> I've got my critics from uh, that want to kill me. I mean, you know, it's, it's crazy. They, they're out there. And uh, they... They, uh, the world now, and you were talking about that lawlessness, but the, the, they're in the world. They are watching all of us Christians, all of t- on TV and all. They watch us. They take down everything we say, and they do everything to destroy us on the Internet. That's why I don't read the Internet. So if you want to, if you think you're making me mad... I'm not mad because I don't read it, I don't, you know, and I, but uh, this, this is a lawless time. And when you see North Korea now making missiles ready, nuclear weapons, U.S. analysis says, well, that's happened. It's, they can now, this morning, they said they can put a missile on a warhead can now. I, can I take this one step further? We've been researching this the last couple days. The scary thing is they've been uh, practicing and testing their submarines. They've been going out for a week at a time on missions, and they've been testing launches from underneath the water, and they've been successful. So that means they can come much closer than the North Korean shoreline. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is they've recently just come out also with uh, evidence that they are targeting... Hawaii, they're targeting Washington, D.C., they're targeting uh, other places like Austin, Texas. And those are things that we, we currently really need to be worried about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
and praying for. We talked about and Graham Lott talking about God's judgment coming to America, the sun turning dark, yes. mm-hmm. and then the solar eclipse. ABC News talks about everything mm-hmm. to know about the upcoming celestial event. Pastor, what's so interesting about this eclipse, too, is there's a lot of hype over it in the secular world as well. I mean, there's so many news articles. If you just uh, Google this eclipse right now, people are having eclipse parties to watch this thing. You can buy glasses to look at it. But something that Anne Graham Loth said in in this article, which I think is so interesting, is that the fact that people are uh, having these parties and celebrating it, it reminds her of the mind of the Babylonian king Belshazzar, who threw a drunken feast the night of Medes and the Persians crept under the city You know, Pastor Jim, uh, NBC has this article and they wanted to tell us that what is so particularly uh, rare about this event, this eclipse, is that uh, this is the first time the path of totality exclusively crossed the continental USA from coast to coast since June 8th of 1918. It's also the first continent-wide eclipse to be visible only from the United States since 1776, mm-hmm. which was a Revolutionary War. It, you know, retired NASA uh, astrophysics photographer said the experience usually lasts for just a couple of minutes, but it's truly out of the world. It's like no other experience you've ever had, that it's a experience you feel it, the hairs on your arm, on the back of your neck stand up, you get goosebumps. It says you have to be there to understand it. And uh, so this is August 21 mm-hmm. when a, this ex- solar eclipse will arc across the continental United States for the first time in decades. Yeah, it's uh, the amazing thing they say because it's a total solar eclipse. If you're in that path, the sun literally goes out and you can see the starlit night. What? You can see the stars. Oh, I didn't hear. I didn't. Oh, yeah. And the path itself, which I think is interesting, is 70 miles wide, the path of totality. Wow. Uh, so a lot of interesting uh, things about that. Well, the fact that the lower 48 states can all see this in some capacity, is is that significant? The entire United States will be able to see it. Some will see the solar eclipse maybe just halfway with like the moon toward the bottom. Some will see it with the moon toward the top. It depends on whether you're north or south. Uh Uh, But I think the fact that the entire lower 48 goes dark, you know, see some of it, that again, this is speaking of our nation as a whole, could experience some kind of judgment. Could this be a warning to to our nation? Because it it says in the the, the material I have here, it crosses the United States and no other country. Right. Mm -hmm. And and what's fascinating about the United States, going back to the 100 years ago that you were saying in 1918, Mm -hmm. that was World War I. That's the eclipse I was talking about when it took place. But what about this? If, did you hear? If this is the first continent-wide eclipse yes. to be visible since only seven, from the United States since 1776. And guess what? <laughs> when did we become a nation in 1776? What day? Fourth of July. Guess what day the Fourth of July was on the biblical calendar in 1776? I it, don't know. It was the 17th of Tammuz, the very day they worshiped the golden calf. And here we have this big golden calf on Wall Street. And it's the economy that is worshiped. And our nation was founded on the very, very same day they worshiped the golden calf. This material is quite amazing. And and this is my first time to read some of these news there because we got a lot of news on this. A lot of interest in this. And this is Mm -hmm. just a few. I mean, you... Let's not even mention what's going on in our cities, the tension, the racial tension. I mean, so many different things. I just left Poplar Bluff, Missouri, with some of the key leaders of Chicago and and other cities, African-American leaders, and they're talking about the tension that is going on. It, could Black there be something? Matter. Exactly. Could there be something yes. behind all this? It, the problem is the English language again. The translations are wrong in your Bible. Where it talks about nation shall rise against nation, that's not the correct translation. The word, the Greek word is ethnos. It's ethnic group will rise against ethnic group. And so here in the United States, we have all these different ethnic groups. And this is why you, uh, 
why you see the problem over in Syria. You have all these different ethnic groups. But it's the same thing here in the United States. Is the ethnic group will begin to rise against ethnic group. And that's what we're seeing highlighted right now. Absolutely. Wow. wow. This is the dates and the times. It's quite interesting. 1776. It's yes. Quite a date that I didn't know it. The last one or in the, the only broad full continent wide right. eclipse was 1776. You knew that. Yeah. You know everything, don't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> but as we've been going through this, it's, it's just amazing. It's, and it happens to go through our state, so maybe we'll be able to see it. This is amazing. You know what's interesting about all this throughout the whole program, the last few days you've been here, we have discussed that we better know the times that we're in. Yes. And there's so many church people that are not even near interested on in what's going on right now. And I feel like I was you the other night at Bishop's Church. And when Bishop asked me to come up and speak about you for 10 minutes, I almost sounded like you sounding the trumpet in front of these leaders talking about, watch the times. We're yes. in the last days. Yes. We are in the, in the moment of the hour of the church where very few people are going to be talking about what's going on right now. And if you don't understand where we're at right now, you need to get on the phone right now and order this calendar so you can align with God once again and understand why, the, why it is it that God said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I mean, that scripture alone is, brings more significance to me today than ever before because what day was I born in? What day did certain on things happen? On the biblical happen? calendar. Exactly. So you understand that my life has a meaning what if your life has a meaning today and you don't even know it? Get near the gospel. Get near to what God has for you. The last few days you've been talking about this, the importance of knowing the times and the days. And, Dad, you've been preaching about this since I met you. I can't believe that God is pushing you one more time to preach the revelation at this very hour, at this very second, using this stage to reach the world to proclaim the gospel of the revelation in the, in the last day. This is your moment. When the devil tells you you're done, check with God. We have video from your visit to Ronnie Webb. I don't know if yes. the boys can find it in there. Could you run that? Bishop. Dream work makes the team work or teamwork makes the dream work, whatever, however you want to say it. The vision is we're working together. Absolutely. It's all about unity. The NAACP, we all know it. They've done some amazing things in our community. I could not believe the statement that was being made for a community warning African-American community not to travel to Missouri because otherwise they will get in trouble and they will be in their own. I want to know, as a bishop, what do you say to something like that? Well, first of all, I stand in the middle, and I'm a man of unity and not division. This is what happened when you don't connect. Well, you've got people on one side of the corner that's speaking uh, with their group, and then you got another group on the other side that's speaking with their group. Well, we got to come together and have respectful dialogue so that we can come up with a godly solution. Well, when you look at uh, racial profiling, and, and if the record says that this is what's happening, then we need to visit that. We need to talk about it. We can't act like it doesn't exist. But at the same time, we need someone that has godly solutions that not, that's not going to separate because of races. But when, what we're seeing in teamwork is the unity of the body of Christ. And we're speaking, all of us are speaking together saying, we believe in unity. Yes. Until we make united efforts and stop standing in our corners and pointing the fingers at one another and blaming one another, we'll never come to a resolution. And uh, Pastor Jim is a kingdom man. And, and, and we want to praise God for Pastor Jim because he's one of the voices in America and in the world that God is using to promote unity in the body of Christ. Amen. There you go. From Poplar Bluff, Missouri, we say God loves you. And remember, he really does. Teamwork <laughs> makes the dream work. Amen. Oh. That's great, Mondo.
I'm glad you went there. I, I love that man. Uh, he calls me when I'm going through crisis, which is very often. And, but he's always there. He always is there. And he's, we're like brothers. And he's an amazing man of God. And he's on my board of directors. And the governor here of this state has him at the governor's, governor's mansion, mansion, I guess. Which, by the way, the governor wants to be here. On the show. Stay yeah. Right here. Yeah. So we're going to work on bringing him here. I love Missouri. I, I, I'm very upset that people would say, don't come to Missouri because that's where I am and that's where <laughs> Morningside is. And, uh, <laughs> and we're going to talk about some stuff about Missouri and everything else because yes. I'm going to bring the bishop in and have him do some shows with me. But I was in the White House a few days ago. Yes. And when I was in the White House, I recommended that they get connected with Bishop Ron Webb, this man. Yes. He's a man of God. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Mondo just informed me yes. that the White House has already called, called him. him. Absolutely. I mean, there's a shift going on. You prophesied over him saying that he will be America's bishop. And you know what? You're correct. And this man has so much insight. He, he loves the white and the black. He loves everybody, the, uh, every other color. But he, he's just an, a man of God. And his show is on our network. Yes. And th- I don't know if you've seen his show. It is amazing. It is, it is he probably the ha- has the greatest God-given wisdom to help pastors and leaders and what to do. When, yes. and, and because... I'll tell you what, he's probably the only person that really understands what I've been through in my lifetime Mm -hmm. in the leadership when you have people that want to bring you down and all. And he he he's at he's at such demand. So everywhere, you know, he's in great demand. And uh, he and I are hoping to we've been trying to build a a dream center in Missouri and uh, for helping young people, you know, get out of drugs and all. And, but people got jealous when they found out that a big company was doing some stuff to to give him land and to help with the thing. And jealousy will kill everything, people. It's just, it's just awful. But uh, what God wants, we want to do. Absolutely. And uh, we're, we're, we're getting ready to open one of our new networks. And we need people to stand with us. We just need people to stand because the miracles are taking place. It's now. And this, if I'm ever going to do anything, I'm, it's now for me to do it. Right. But God has opened more for me to do than any time in my life, except back when I was building Heritage USA. Heritage USA was supposed to be a place where people would come and be inspired and blessed and all. But it was a place where you would never have to leave. Yeah. We would, uh, we built it that we were going to have retirement home mm-hmm. and, and uh, you would have a place you could live. First of all, you could live in your home there right. and have nurses call on you. So that would have that, that part. And then if you needed nurses care, you'd, you'd have a part of it in a separate building than where, where you'd have it like a nurse home. But you're right there. You're still here. You're still there, you know. <laughs> and uh, people hated my dream, but they loved it. Millions loved it. Yeah. It was supposedly the third largest attended park in America. Mm-hmm. That's what they said by actual count. But there was church people who wanted it down. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the leaders that was leading the thing, he said, they're having too much fun. So I'm trying not to have so much fun here, you know. But I really, somebody prophesied that my, I'd get my train back. Yeah, it's in yeah. Jacobs. And uh, wait till you see our Christmas catalog. I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe God's going to do something. Yes. And, and I really believe that this place was built to be a lighthouse in the last days. Mm-hmm. And then the the shopping network we call it but but it's just it's a place where you can buy christian books and records and tapes and and crosses and you know bible bookstores have almost all gone out of business all the major 
Christian bookstores are gone. They've, they've, they've gone bankrupt. They've closed them down. And so we believe that we can pay for the last day stuff by doing some of these unusual things. If you don't get super spiritual people trying to destroy it, you know, because that's what they do. They, they say, well, that's not of God. You shouldn't be doing that. You know, well, they always say, why are you begging for money? <laughs> so we can pay the bill. You know, I mean, that's what you have to do. You know, the prophecy is that even the train's coming back. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be amazing just to see it coming down the road one day? <laughs> but uh, but it, what we do is use it for uh, uh, the place to drive people. And we're, we're really dreaming. And our new studios, we need several studios. We're, we're trying to put them together. Yes. Faith without works is dead. And yes. so what we do is we just begin it and, and we do it. And we're building on a lot of different projects. I've got a prayer mountain that I want to finish someday. I just need some people to stand with us. That's right. And a few months ago, we had people uh, just give to say, this is a thanksgiving to God. That's right. And people were giving without any gift. Mm-hmm. And today, we, we haven't talked a lot about giving. But for those who would just say, Jim, we're going to sow a seed. And we're going to be a part of this last day ministry that can literally go to every person in the world. And with this new technology and network that we're pulling together to be able, if if the whole grid goes down, we'd still be able to broadcast over the world. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be announced soon. But, you know, I am over retirement age but uh, it's not in the Bible is it Mark <laughs> that you have a retirement age do you have a retirement age stamped on our I forehead don't. I don't I, so we, we have to keep going and uh, my father retired very young I think daddy was 55 or something when he retired he was very early I'm 70 Seven will be seventy-eight. That yeah. my next birthday. Mm-hmm. Mama Lori's having a birthday in a few weeks, mm-hmm. and she's going to be sixty mm-hmm. years old. And she is a young sixty, but lately she's been going twenty-four hours a day, and that's she's not with us today because she's extremely. She's just worn out. Yeah. Almost what you call burnout burn out. in burn. Tell you the truth, and you're going to realize. You're not all alone in your warfare because we're with you. We're with you and we believe in you and we just believe God's about to do some amazing things. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. Listen, you need to be prepared at least for the basic stuff of life. I live on the Gulf Coast. We're always inundated with tornadoes or hurricanes and stores are closed, power's out for days, and you have to you have to shelter in place. It's during these times we have a great opportunity to share the hope, share the love, share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The first time a nuclear bomb goes off anywhere in the world, whether it's Asia or whether it's the Middle East, the government's going to say, let's get down there and shut them down while there's still a warehouse full of food because the government has already warned the food warehouses that when a national catastrophe happens or a global catastrophe happens, we're coming after your food. I believe people are going to order your food today. You can start with one bucket. You can say, well, I can't afford any food. You can afford a bucket for a gift of $75. $75 when you order it by itself. Mm -hmm. But you can do that every month. And the price lowers to $70 a month. Yeah, $70 a month. So you're saving $80 a year. Yeah. I I know you have food supplies and they're in barrels. Now, I'm going to tell you something that you don't know. But in my dreams i see food in containers that can float that's ours i I literally saw this and i thought now that's an idea if people have something that floats and they tie it together Mm -hmm. then they're not going to have to worry about losing it if it's protected there is buttermilk pancakes uh quick oats fast quick oats 
uh, potato, mashed potatoes, vegetable stew blend, right, which white is- rice, mm-hmm. pinto beans, and morning mousse, low-fat milk. It's an alternative that is so rich and wonderful. This pancake, these pancakes are as good or better than you've eaten at pancake houses. All the food you guys see in the store is exactly the same food you see here. All we're doing is controlling the environment the food's stored in. This food's everyday food. And if we are prepared, then we can minister to others. The Bible says there's a time of trouble like no other time on earth. And it's going to last seven years. Mm-hmm. And so that's seven years of food. That lasts through the time of trouble for $1,500, which is an amazing, mm-hmm. amazing yes, buy right now. The cheapest we've been able to price the food in the history of our... 19 cents a serving. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. Nowhere around you're going to find that type of price. And it's called staying alive, and that'll keep you alive for those seven years. Yes. But also... You know, you, you, you put other food with it, you can make it last for years and years and years. You know, and I think people, one of the things you have to understand is that the value of this is $4,800, and today you're getting it for $1,500, so you're saving $3,300 today. Yeah. It's an amazing yeah. you deal. Need to, you need to do what God says. Things are happening. Mm-hmm. When you're looking at what, 17, 19 cents a serving, what is it like? 57, 57 cents a, a day. day for one yes. person. I would get a bucket of food and start that way and stop going to the grocery store because groceries are so expensive. Part of the commission, the Great Commission, and also the judgment seat of Christ is going to be based around I was hungry. Yeah. And you gave me meat, right? That's right. Yes. And what an opportunity for, especially for people that can afford to do more than just for themselves. Yes. What a door opener it would yes. be for them to be ready to uh, also pass along some of this food product to neighbors and others that might not be that willing to talk to you about God. But now all of a sudden you've done something in fulfillment of the commission, right? Yes. And as we reach out to the lost, that is ultimately pleasing to God and reaching out to meet their needs and get their attention and fill them full of the Word of God and something for their tummy. That means quit thinking about you and your family. We need to organize. We've got to start thinking bigger than ourselves because we're going to have a period of 42 months where we're going to refuse to take the mark of the beast. And during that time where we refuse to take it, you're not going to be able to go out and buy any food. You're not going to be able to buy any resources that you're going to need to go through that three and a half years. And let me tell you, we're going to see a period of time before the 42 months even happens that we're going to need to be carrying ourselves through that period of time. But we have a year for you, right. which is just $300. That's it. That's, a, that's an amazing, right? Absolutely. It's for amazing. one year, $300 for 24 cents. Yeah, and that's serving. a value of $750. So you're saving $450 today, and that's one year plus one month of food. People ask me, and nobody's ever heard me publicly say this, okay? Nobody. I have a year's supply of food for my staff. Good. Why do I do that? I do that because I know that if something happens, it's going to be panic for everybody except people who have prepared. That's right. And then if if mom and dad both want a year to stay alive, then you get uh, two years uh, actually, it's two years and two months. So what is the price on that? That is $600, and that is a value of $1,500. So you're saving $900 today. Ten buckets of amazing, amazing of our brand new Staying Alive food. The best bargain we've ever, ever had. Spend your money on quality food. It's going to be the food that gets you through the hard times. It's the morale builder. It's going to help you get through that time. Folks, I know food. I know the cost of food. They're giving this away. This is a good investment. Food is investment. I love their food. And we eat their food. My wife, my kids. My ki- I raise my kids on it. 
This is the Cadillac of food. I know that this uh, stuff with the survival food, mm-hmm. somebody, you know, but it's. I think it's just common sense food. I'm glad Mike and I, we, yeah. we bought our food <laughs> and we are so glad that we did. Call now, 1-888-988-1588. And you can write Pastor Jim at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. You can also order this offer right now on our website at jimbakershow.com. Mark, thank you for thank being you here so this much. week. Appreciate thank it you. so much. Thank you. Thank my team and all. And uh, do the $35 if you can. Order more books for your neighbors and friends of God's like Daytimer. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Okay. You're going to love it. Thank you, Sue, for helping me out. My pleasure, Jim. I hope, love it. I trust Mom will be back with us on our next show. Yes. God loves you. <laughs> Call us at 1-888-988-1588 or go to our website. Do you know what our website is? I do, Jim. JimBakerShow.com. <laughs> and shop to your heart's delight. Shop and to your drop, ladies Get and your food there. Why, we got this. The, you know the pancake deal? People love pancakes. Oh, my. The pancake, it, Who doesn't the pancake deal is, is going crazy. Yes, it's it going is. crazy. It really is. And, uh, why we have them in the warehouse. That's right. Why we, they, they're making pancakes, but they last for 30 years. They can still order it right now. Yeah, they can go online and order, go on and line and warm or order them. They're beautiful. They're, 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 they're amazing. Well, the good thing about this is the recipe book that comes with it. Therefore, you're going to see you can make what? Butterfly uh, fried chicken. Yes. Churros. I was amazed at all there is to make with pancake mix. Who knew? I mean, it's worth just yeah. getting the bucket just for that recipe book, honestly. Yep. Well, we got to go. Yes. <laughs> God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Coming soon to Morningside and the Jim Baker Show. Mike Bickle of the International House of Prayer will join us Thursday, August 17th. Evangelist Alveda King will be back with us Tuesday, August 22nd. Author of God Minute for Good, R.T. Kendall, will be here to introduce his new book Thursday, August 24th. Author and prophet Rick Joyner will be sharing a powerful word on Tuesday, August 29th. Doug Weed will be with us Thursday, August 31st. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn will introduce his new book, The Paradigm, Wednesday, September 6th, and Thursday, September 7th. Former Congressman Michelle Bachman will make her first appearance on The Jim Baker Show, Tuesday, September 12th. Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, Carl Gallops, and Tom Horn will return Monday, September 28th. Join us every night at 7 p.m. for The Prophet Speak, a night filled with worship and ministry. For our full schedule, go online to jimbakershow.com. We can't wait for you to see what God's doing here at Morningside.